Dr. Krista Kassler is searching for a few small minds. Kassler, a child developmental psychologist, studies two to five-year-olds, hoping to unravel the mysteries of how little people think, and especially how they use tools. Instead of microscopes, Kassler's lab is well-stocked with toys, apple juice, and goldfish crackers. What we've been finding in kind of a stripped-down version of this is that children make tool function mappings much more robustly than we ever thought they would. So people thought, oh, kids are going to be really creative, really flexible. Um, when I test adults, they're not like that at all. So I show them some objects and I say, oh, hey, look at this, I can ring a bell. And then forever and always after that, that's a bell ringer. And I won't use it for anything else, that's my bell ringer. We, we, we privilege that function, we've set it aside, and that's what it's for. And you ask me to do something else, I need a new tool, because that's a bell ringer over there, right? Um, the prediction initially had been that maybe children would be more flexible with that. It turns out from like two and a half, they are just like undergrads, just like adults. They do the same thing. It seems like when we see children being more fluid or flexible in their mappings, it has more to do with them not necessarily knowing what objects are for. Once they know it, they stick with it too. It turns out this is really important because it's really efficient to have a brain that works this way, that, that makes that categorization and is done. I'm really excited about this. It's way too early to say for sure, but I wonder if this is going to be a bit of an inroad into understanding um, creative problem solving a bit more, that when we, the way you ask the question and the way you pose the options can give us a very sort of formulaic answer, or if you pose it a little differently, give some slightly different options, potentially it can give, a, give children sort of license to uh, be a little more creative and try other things. If that's indeed the case, that's very cool, I think, and could potentially have some really neat applications for how children are learning, how we should be structuring questions to help them in, with engaging material, with thinking about things more broadly rather than just giving the the expected answer, this kind of thing. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It tends to be pretty fun. You know, moms often will ask random child development questions because they know that's my area anyway, so that's kind of fun. The kids play, they enjoy it. The project is played like a game. They usually think it's really cool. And at the end, um, two different things that families kind of get out of it. Usually I don't have funding or money to pay subjects, but I do have a gift usually that people can get a little cute t-shirt. And we also uh, try to make sure families stay in the loop on what we've done. So when we're finished with collecting all the data for this project, we'll send her a synopsis that says, hey, this is what your kids helped us understand. Here's what we're learning because of you being here. This is something new, no one knew before. And now because of this, this is what we know. So it kind of lets parents know what they've been contributing to.